We are back in the Word, all right? And we are back on the same topic. The more I dig, the more I find. And we are talking about your boy, Paul. All right, now I want to bring up history on St. Paul's death. This is going to be on the screen. The exact details of St. Paul's death are unknown, but tradition holds that he was beheaded in Rome and thus died as a martyr for his faith. His death was perhaps part of the executions of Christians ordered by the Roman Emperor Nero following the great fire in the city in 64 CE. All right, this is 64 years after Jesus departed. All right, and history holds the tradition that Paul was beheaded, okay, just like Ishbosheth, just like King Saul, just like the Philistine, who? Goliath, just like Holofernes. There is so much time to the Apostle Paul because he was the one who made that scripture. Christ is the head of every man. That is heresy. All right? Now we're going to deal with more and more on the Apostle Paul. Now, I want to go to something I didn't finish yesterday. I want to deal with that Babylonish garment, all right, a little bit further in detail. This is going to be Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. This is the book of Joshua chapter 7, verse 21. When I saw among the spoils a goodly Babylonish garment and 200 shekels of silver and a wedge of gold of 50 shekels weight, then I coveted them and took them, and behold, they are hid in the earth in the midst of my tent and the silver under it. All right, so these things were hid in the ground, okay? They were buried, just like you do a dead body. Now I want to go to John chapter 20, verse 5. This is the book of John chapter 20, verse 5. And he stooping down and looking in, saw the linen clothes lying, yet when he not in. Then come and Simon Peter following him, and went into the sepulcher, and see it the linen clothes lie. Seeing the linen clothes lie. Look at this lie, lie, lie. All right, we already saw the linen clothes lie. All right, lying. Now keep going. And the napkin that was about his head. And the napkin that was about his head. Wow, keep going. Not lying with the linen clothes but wrapped together in a place by itself. All right, so here we have some clothes in the sepulcher, in the grave, just like Mr. Akon was burying the Babylonish garment, all right? Now I want to take you to Acts 758, okay? Because you got to understand, the Apostle Paul is responsible for the murder of Jesus Christ on biblical record. Now, we know that God took him alive, but according to the Bible scriptures, Paul is the one who put that lie out there that Christ was murdered when he wasn't. Peace be upon him. Now, I want to go to Acts 7.58. This is the book of Acts chapter 7, verse 58. And cast them out of the city and stoned them. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet. They laid down that garment at your boy Saul's feet. Paul was responsible for Stephen's murder, an innocent man. Now, Stephen is a type and shadow of Jesus. Types and shadows are very, very important, okay? Now, let's keep going. Whose name was Saul, and they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. And he kneeled down and cried with a loud voice, Lord, lay not this sin to their charge. And when he had said this, he fell asleep. All right, so this man, okay, if you go up further, let's go to Acts 7, 57 in your own Bible. Let's get a little bit more information on this because this man had a visitation. He's seeing God Almighty, all right? Now, you got to understand, we just talked about Jesus going to heaven alive. And I just told you how Stephen is a type 
and shadow of Jesus because while this innocent man was being stoned, he had a visitation from the Most High. All right? And the witnesses laid down their clothes at Saul, okay, the Apostle Paul's feet. All right? Because he approved of this murder. Now let's keep going. Verse 56. And said, Behold, I see the heavens opened, and the Son of Man standing on the right hand of God. That's what I want. So this man, before he died, he had a visitation with the Most High. All right? Now, you got to think about it. Paul was the one teaching that Jesus Christ was crucified. All right? And you got to understand that this man is a type and shadow of Jesus, but he's having a visitation from the heavenlies, okay? He's having a visitation of the Most High. And he's seeing Jesus. And this man is being killed, all right? Now I want you to keep going. Then they cried out with a loud voice and stopped their ears and ran upon him with one accord and cast him out of the city and stoned him. And the witnesses laid down their clothes at a young man's feet, whose name was Saul. Whose name was Saul. I told you. Those clothes always come back to Saul, okay? Saul is the wolf in sheep clothing. He just had Stephen martyred. He just had him killed, okay? Now I want you to keep going, and I want to show you more and more proof, all right? There is so much I can go through right now, but I'm just going to focus on one story right now. And I want to go to the story of Jehoshaphat. This is going to be 1 Kings 22, 30. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 30. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. All right, now that stuff people don't have no clue. What that is going into. But you're going to find out tonight. All right. You're going to find out today. All right. When he said, I will disguise myself, you enter into the battle. All right. You put on your royal robes. Okay. That is Paul. Okay. He is literally hiding behind Jesus. This is what I mean. Okay. Men are shields. Now, I want to show you in Scripture that men are shields. Let's go to the book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 54. This is the book of Judges, chapter 9, verse 54. Then he called hastily unto the young man his armor bearer, and said unto him, Draw thy sword, and slay me, that men say not of me. A woman slew him, and his young man thrust him through, and he died. Okay, so this is Abimelech. He is a type and shadow of Paul. He killed 70 of his brothers, almost, okay? He killed 69 so that he could be king, even though his dad told the people he was not going to be king, and he did not want any of his sons to be king because God was king. So Abimelech's story is the same thing, okay? Now I want to show you another scripture that's going to precept with men being shields. This is going to be 1 Samuel 17, 41. This is the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 17, verse 41. And the Philistine came on and drew near unto David, and the man that bare the shield went before him. All right, so the man was the shield, okay? The man was going to take the blows for the man, okay? That's what a bodyguard or a shield is, okay? You are going to take the blows for somebody else, okay? Now, David was an armor bearer for King Saul, just like Jesus was an armor bearer for the Apostle Paul, whose name really is Saul. It's just that simple. Everyone thought that Jehoshaphat or Jesus was the true king of Israel, but now the truth is out. And today you know that the true king of the Christian church is not Jesus, it is Paul. Jesus was going to be a martyr, but God rescued him. Now, if we go to 2 Samuel chapter 2, verse 21, it reads, 
And Abner said to him, Turn thee aside to the right hand or to thy left, and lay thee a hold on one of the young men, and take thee his armor. But Asio would not turn aside from following him. This is the picture of a true martyr. I'm not finna hide behind no man. Okay, I'm finna go straight forward and I'm gonna plunge into the battle. This is a picture of the true martyrs that we've had in history, okay? That is not going to associate no man with God, for God is our shield. As Psalms 3 and 3 says, and as Psalms 119, 114 says, this is the picture of a true martyr. And Jesus was going to go out that way, except God rescued him. Don't you know there was a lot of money on the table? There was a lot of gold, a lot of silver. Everything was on the table for Jesus to take the kingdom, but he did not take the offer. And this is why Judas was in so much trouble because he made an agreement to either make Jesus king or to have him arrested. All right. And the plan backfired. Jesus was not going to accept the offer. So now you'll know that this story about Ahab and Jehoshaphat is really about Paul and Jesus. Okay. The true king of Israel was not Jehoshaphat. It's not Jesus. It's Paul. Paul is the one who told Jesus to put on his royal robes. He is the one framing Jesus as the king of Israel. What about 13 letters? Okay. He is the man that God is after. God is going to spare Jesus just like he spared Jehoshaphat. OK, God is going to spare him, but his real enemy is from the tribe of Benjamin. It's the wolf in sheep clothing. It is the man we know as Achan, OK, who buried the wedge of gold, the cross, who's killing the church with the cross, who's making Jesus God, who's calling Jesus King, who's doing all these things, Paul is responsible. The wolf in sheep clothing. Now, I want to show you further proof in this. Now, did y'all notice that David became King Saul's armor bearer? Mm -hmm. Yes. All right, he became his armor bearer. What was he doing? He was taking the blame he was taking whatever came his way. David was going to take it for Saul. Now, that's what I mean when I'm telling y'all that Paul is hiding behind Jesus. He's using Jesus like a shield, okay? He's like, look, you put on your royal clothes. You king, even though Ahab was the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat is only king of Judah. He's only king of three tribes. Ahab was the king of Israel. He was king over ten tribes. So if you was to put Jehoshaphat together with Ahab, who is the king? Ahab. Ahab, Ahab is the king. was the king of Israel, all right? He was the king of the entire nation of Israel. Jehoshaphat was only king of Judah, all right? So now we want to get back to where we was at, all right? Let's go back to 1 Kings chapter 22, verse 30. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and enter into the battle, but put thou on thy robes. And the king of Israel disguised himself and went into the battle. Okay, who are they calling the king of Israel? Ahab. Ahab, okay. Ahab is the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat is not the king of Israel. He is only the king of Judah. So Ahab, and I want to deal with the and I want to deal with what's actually going on so you can get the second meaning, okay? Ahab is the king of Israel. All right? And he is about to go to battle. So he's like, hmm, Jehoshaphat, you put on your royal robes. I'm going to go to the battle disguised. 
And he was doing that because he was using Jehoshaphat as a shield, all right? Because let's go to the battle, all right? Before we go to the battle, I want to go to the prophecy. I want to go to the prophecy, and this is going to be in 1 Kings 22, verse 17. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 17. And he said, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. Okay, so this is Micaiah, all right? And Micaiah is the real prophet, okay? He is a type and shadow of the Gentile messenger. And Ahab had 400 prophets, okay? And his prophets told him he would win the battle. So Jehoshaphat was like, okay, I'm with you, my people, your people. We're going to go to war, but I want to go to a real prophet, all right? And Ahab said, I don't like Micaiah because Micaiah always has evil things to say about me. He never has anything good to say about me, all right? So now the real prophet was playing games. He was like, oh yeah, you're going to win the battle. You're going to win the battle. And then Ahab was like, man, tell me the truth by God. All right? Swear before the living God and tell me the truth. And then Micaiah tells him the truth. And he says, look, I saw all Israel scattered upon the hills as sheep that have not a shepherd. And the Lord said, these have no master. Let them return every man to his house in peace. You got to understand, y'all, Jehoshaphat is not the king of Israel. Think about it. There's two kings on the battlefield. You got Jehoshaphat and you have Ahab. Ahab was the king of Israel. Jehoshaphat was not king over his army. Okay? That's why he said, I see all of Israel scattered. Okay? They have no master. Because the truth of the matter is, there was only one king, okay? And it's the same thing with the Apostle Paul and Jesus. Jesus is not king. The Apostle Paul is king of the Christian church, okay? Now you got to understand as we keep going, you'll catch it. Now let's go to verse 18. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would prophesy no good concerning me, but evil? Keep going. And he said, Hear thou therefore the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting on his throne, and all the host of heaven standing by him on his right hand and on his left. Keep going. And the Lord said, Who shall persuade Ahab, that he may go up and fall at Ramoth Gilead? And one said on this manner, and another said on that manner. And there came forth a spirit, and stood before the Lord, and said, I will persuade him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go forth. And I will be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And he said, Thou shalt persuade him, and prevail also. Go forth and do so. Keep going. Now therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of all these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil concerning thee. Keep going. But Zedekiah the son of Kenanah went near and smelled Micaiah on the cheek and said, which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? See, that's how you know this is a picture of the Gentile messenger. How the scepter is going to go from Israel, okay, to Ishmael, all right? So keep going. And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see in that day. All right, inner chamber. Now, who talked about inner chambers? This is a hard question, I'll tell y'all. Jesus, okay, he talked about the false Christ. He said, beware if he comes out of the wilderness or in the secret chambers, okay? So this is another picture of Paul's ministry right here, okay? Now I want you to keep going. To hide thyself. And the king of Israel said, take Micaiah and carry him back unto Amon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, put this fellow in the prison, and feed him with bread of affliction, and with water of affliction, until I come in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou return at all in peace, the Lord had not spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, O people, every one of you. All right. So he told him the truth. Look, ain't 
ain't no king in Israel. The king of Israel is going to die. All right? And they're going to have no master. That's where this Gentile messenger comes in. Okay? Because Israel is about to be destroyed. Okay? They have no more master. And I'm going to show you who was the real master of the church is Paul. I'm going to show you that. Now I want you to go back to the battle and I want you to go to verse 31. This is the book of 1 Kings chapter 22 verse 31. But the king of Syria commanded his 30 and two captains that had rule over his chariots, saying, fight neither with small nor great, save only the king of Israel. All right, this fight is only with one person, okay? This fight is not against Jesus. This fight is against the man from the tribe of Benjamin, the wolf in the sheep clothing, and that is Paul, okay? He said, don't fight with nobody, only the king of Israel. Now keep going. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat that they said, surely it is the king of Israel. And they turned aside to fight against him. All right, stop right there. Everybody thinks Jesus is the king of Israel. Everybody thinks he's the king of Israel, okay? That's because Paul used him as a shield. He set him on high. He said that he was the son of God, okay? He said that he was God manifest in the flesh, okay? He the one that blew up his head and got everybody around the world thinking that Jesus is the king of Israel. So they was getting ready to attack Jesus, okay? I know this is Jehoshaphat, but this is metaphorically speaking of Jesus. Now keep going. And Jehoshaphat cried out. All right, Jesus cried out, okay? He cried out. Now keep going. And it came to pass when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel that they turned back from pursuing him. I told you, Jehoshaphat was nothing. He was not the king of Israel. The kingdom was taken from Israel, okay? And it was given to the northern kingdom at this time. And so Ahab was the king with all the tribes under him, okay? And this is Paul, okay? The founder of the Christian church with all these churches up under him, okay? Now the truth is out and everybody knows now Jesus is not the king of Israel. So now somebody else is about to be attacked. Let's keep going. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Wherefore he said unto the driver of his chariot, Turn thy hand, and carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. All right, somebody! Oh, God, I give you the praise. Somebody came out with a bow at random, and they found out who was the wolf in sheep clothing, they found out that Jesus was a true prophet, that he never intended to be king. That's why he ran when they tried to make him king. Now, we're going to come back to this same verse, but I'm going to show you. There was a lot of money involved if Jesus would have tried to be king, okay? That's why Judas was all over his money bag. Judas was making a deal with the Romans to make Jesus king, but Jesus would not be king. He would not take it. And I'm going to show you that in the Gospel of Barnabas. This is going to be page 217 in the Gospel of Barnabas. And it reads, The soldiers took Judas and bound him, not without derision, for he truthfully denied that he was Jesus. And the soldiers mocking him said, Sir, fear not, for we are come to make thee king of Israel. So what's going on is Judas came to take Jesus, all right, away. But what happened was Jesus went up to heaven. He was rescued. And now he was turned into Jesus, okay? So now y'all understand that as I start this over. The soldiers took Judas because they thought he was Jesus and bound him. 
not without derision. For he truthfully denied that he was Jesus. So Judas was like, I'm not Jesus. I'm not Jesus. That's what he was saying. And the soldiers mocking him said, sir, fear not. Okay, so they think they talking to Jesus. They like, calm down, chill out. For we are come to make you king of Israel. And we have bound you because we know that thou does refuse the kingdom. So they kept offering Jesus to be king. They kept offering and Jesus kept turning it down. So now they took him by force, okay? And they about to make him king or you're going to be crucified. One or the other, all right? So now I want to go back to where I was at. Judas answered, now have ye lost your senses, okay? You are come to take Jesus of Nazareth with arms and lanterns as against a robber and you have bound me that have guided you to make me king he's like look i'm not jesus okay i'm judas but they don't get it they looking at this man and they like man you is jesus okay for he truthfully denied that he was jesus and the soldiers mocking him said sir fear not for we are come to make thee king of Israel, and we have bound thee because we know that thou dost refuse the kingdom. Judas answered, now, we, now have you lost your senses. You are come to take Jesus of Nazareth with arms and lanterns as against a robber, and you have bound me that have guided you to make me king. He's like, look, I'm the one that took y'all here. I'm Judas. I'm not Jesus, but they just don't get it. They think that he's Jesus, and they're trying to make him king. I told you, there was a whole bunch of money on the line if they could have made Jesus king of Israel, okay? And that's what they wanted. Now, I want to get that scripture in your own Bibles. This is going to be John chapter 6, and I believe it's going to be verse 15. This is the book of John, chapter 6, verse 15. When Jesus therefore perceived that they would come and take him by force to make him a king, he departed again into a mountain himself alone. He refused the deal. Think about it, y'all. Israel wanted to be restored as a nation again. And here they have this man walking around doing miracles. So they want to try to make him king to overthrow the Romans. But Jesus was not king, okay? He was not the king of Israel. And so what happened was Paul seen that and he seized upon that inheritance and he professed and made a huge lie that Jesus was king when really he was the king of Israel. Israel, okay? Now, a lot of people are not that studied up to know that there was a lot of money on the line. And who carried Jesus' money back? He, he wanted that money, y'all. He wanted to seize upon that inheritance. He was already the money bag man. Every time Jesus would uh, do miracles and stuff, he was there collecting all that money. All right? When the woman came... And, and, and she had a very expensive bottle of perfume and she broke that alabaster box of anointment or whatever and she poured it on Jesus' feet. Remember what Judas said? He was like, man, this could have been used to, to go on the poor. But really, he wanted the money for himself. He was a greedy person. All right? Judas was a very greedy person. And Judas was the one who carried his money back, all right? And he made a deal with the Romans to try to make Jesus king, okay? But Jesus would not accept the offer. So now let's go back to him being wounded in between the joints because we're going to bring out those joints. This is the book of 1 Kings, chapter 22, verse 34. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture and smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Okay, between the joints, okay? What is that going into? Okay? Now let's go to Colossians, chapter 2, 19. All right? This is the guy that was saying Jesus is the head of every man. 
Okay? This is the man that was saying that Jesus is God manifested in flesh. He was the one teaching that we are the body of Christ. Okay? So guess what is being destroyed? The body of Christ. That's what that's going into. All right. This is talking about a whole religion being destroyed. Let's get that in Colossians 2.19. This is the book of Colossians chapter 2 verse 19. And now holding the head from which all the body by joints and bands having nourishment ministered and knit together increases with the increase of God. Okay. So the apostle Paul was talking about those joints. Let's get another precept. In the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12, in your own Bibles. This is the book of Hebrews, chapter 4, verse 12. For the word of God is quick and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the dividing asunder of soul and spirit, and of the joints and marrow. And of the joints and marrow. Okay, so this is the book of Hebrews. And it's believed that the apostle Paul wrote the book of Hebrews as well. All these types is going back to the Apostle Paul. Now, the word joints is only used six times in the Bible. Amazingly. All right. That's in the entire Bible, including the Apocrypha. So look how accurate that is. Now, another time is used is in Daniel chapter five, verse six. And it's Belteshazzar. And this is another type and shadow of Paul. Let's get that. This book of Daniel, chapter 5, verse 6. And the king's countenance was changed, and his thoughts troubled him, so that the joints of his loins were loosed, and his knees smote one against another. His knees was knocking, okay? <laughs> All right, the king has been troubled, okay? The, the king was Apostle Paul. I don't know how people do not get this. People just don't get this. The Apostle Paul is the founder of the Christian church, okay? He is the true king of the Christian church. But he's been using Jesus like a shield, okay? And you know we have scripture where the Bible says that David became Saul's armor bearer, okay? And the armor bearer cannot hold the weight, all right? Let's go back to where we was at. And let's go to 2 Chronicles. Chapter 19, verse 1. This is the book of Second Chronicles, chapter 19, verse 1. And Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, returned to his house in peace to Jerusalem. And Jehu, the son of Hanani, the seer, went out to meet him and said to King Jehoshaphat, Shouldest thou help the ungodly and love them that hate the Lord? Therefore is wrath upon thee from before the Lord? All right, so if you pay attention... You'll understand that first it was Jehoshaphat and Ahab, all right? And then what happened was they went to see Micaiah. He was the real prophet. Jehoshaphat was not the real prophet. Micaiah was the real prophet. And so you have Ahab, who represents Paul. Then you have Jehoshaphat, which represents Jesus. And then you have Micaiah, which represents the Gentile messenger. Okay, so long story short, the king of Israel died. He was murdered, okay? Although he tried to disguise himself and he tried to have Jehoshaphat killed, okay? Just like we have this lie in our Bibles that say Jesus was crucified and buried, okay? It wasn't true. Jesus was taken alive and we have that truth because of the Gentile messenger, okay? The Gentile messenger told the truth. So now he's going to see a seer. And the real prophet, which is another picture of the real prophet, the seer told him, why are you helping the wicked? Why are you loving people that hate the Lord? But nevertheless, there's good things found in you, okay? And so he continued to go in peace, speaking of Jehoshaphat, or metaphorically speaking of Jesus. So now I want to go down, okay? Because remember I told you, the kingdom was taken from Israel and given to a Gentile heathen nation. That is seen in the beginning, that is seen in the ending. 
And in this story, it's playing it out. How come now, let's see who comes up. Because we've been talking about seers. We've been talking about Syria. All this is going into the prophet, the seer. And you got to understand, they lost that battle to Syria. They lost because they killed Ahab. So now let's keep going. I want you to go to 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 10. This is the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 19, verse 10. And what cause soever shall come to you of your brethren that dwell in their cities between blood and blood, between law and commandment, statutes and judgments, ye shall even warn them that they trespass not against the Lord. Okay, so now Jehoshaphat is setting everything in order. Now watch this. Keep going. And so wrath come upon you and upon your brethren. This do, and ye shall not trespass. Verse 11. And behold, and Moriah the chief priest is over you in all matters of the Lord. Okay, the chief priest. Keep going. And Zebediah the son of Ishmael. The son of who? Ishmael. How come Ishmael is now brought up? Okay, and this man was an Israelite who named himself Ishmael. Okay, because now... The kingdom went to Ishmael. He's amazingly popping up in the next chapter. After the king of Israel was destroyed, okay? Now he's setting everything in order, and I want you to start over again after all matters of the Lord. And Zebediah the son of Ishmael. And Zebediah the son of Ishmael. The ruler of the house of Judah. The ruler over the house of what? Judah. The house of what? Judah. Keep going. For all the king's matters, also the Levites shall be officers before you. Deal courageously, and the Lord shall be with the good. Okay, so now Ishmael is the ruler over the house of Judah. I'm not making this stuff up. It's in your Bibles if you can read. It's right there in the Bible. After the king of Israel was destroyed, okay, he was shot by some random guy, okay, that knew he was the king of Israel. Because remember, he disguised himself and he went into battle thinking nobody knows, okay? Thinking nobody knew that he was the real king of Israel, okay? And this man saw him, okay, and shot him down without even aiming. Not even aiming, okay? And when I think about my testimony, I had no clue about any of this stuff. I'm just studying the Bible. I didn't even know I would be on Paul going on a week, okay? I just seen this, okay? It's in the Bible. And this man was shot down at random by a man that wasn't even aiming. And he shot down the true king of Israel. And now in the next chapter, the prophet comes and he corrects Jehoshaphat. He had a strong word for Jehoshaphat. Okay. And then he tells him, why are you loving people that hate the Lord? Go a few chapters down. And now Ishmael is the ruler over the house of Judah. Now we went past our time. But I still have more and more to go on this map. All right. Now it's time for us to get in these scripts, shall we? We shall. Paul. Paul. He was the man that was shot down at random. He is the king of Israel. Okay? And he is the one who is shot down at random. Okay? He is the one that went into battle disguised and he made everybody believe that Jesus was the king of Israel and Jesus was his armor bearer for only a limited amount of time and that time has dwindled down and it is over it is over okay pull the napkin from over his face and now you see clearly that it is the apostle Paul it is him it is he the king of Israel 
was still in the house of Saul until David came on the scene, the prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, and he has delivered us the truth about the whole matter. All praises are due to Allah.